Hey everybody, welcome back again to another edition of the Forex Market Preview, the mobile version of the Forex Market Preview this week. I'm actually out of town. I'm sitting in my hotel room taking a look at some charts before the market takes off again, and I wanted to try and get you something out uh, before that happens. I'm going to do my best to do that. Uh, if this is the first time you're joining me, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube page, please, and let me know that, uh, leave me a little comment, tell me that you liked it. Um, if you don't like it, just don't say anything. Um, and for those of you who do, thank you for coming back again and again to watch. Now let's get right into it. I'm going to start with the euro dollar. We've been watching this for a while. There is um, the pattern formation that's set up here that we've been watching you know, the completion of that down here uh, around that 3350s level, and the market has really been churning in there. That's right against, if I look left, and I'm, I don't have an actual mouse, I'm using my laptop here. If we look left, we're going to see that we're right in that potential reversal zone. However, that reversal zone does go all the way down to 3300s. So we want to be careful. The market can dip and go back, and we've had a lot of trouble here over the last week getting out of you know kind of this level the market has really been forcing its way down around 3364 but this is a buy it's a long we're looking to go long here we're looking for a buy so wherever you guys decide to take your positions just be watching out for that now euro yen if i switch over there and i look at that it's actually showing the opposite to me and again I had a question about correlations, and I don't pay any attention to correlations correlations do occur in the market they occur um, frequently and sometimes they are. Uh, um, sometimes there's something. There, there's something to that. And sometimes things are very correlated, and other times they're not correlated at all. And so you've really got to be careful when you deal with correlations. And I've just decided, you know, what, I'm not going to try and you know constantly calculate how correlated this pair is against another on this time frame or that time frame. All I'm going to do is focus on the chart on each individual currency pair, and I'm going to make my decision on what to trade or how to trade based off that what I'm seeing on that chart. So I don't worry too much about the correlations, other than the fact that if I get too many like long euro positions or long pound positions, um, then I, I will I will tamp that back. So maybe I won't take four or five trades. I won't be long euro dollar and euro pound and euro yen all at the same time. But this one here, we're holding this kind of resistance level here. The market closed in the bottom 50%, almost in the bottom third of the candle. Let me fatten this up so you guys can see it. Almost in the bottom third of the candle. This tends to indicate downward pressure, and so I would not be surprised to see over the course of Monday this market roll over and come back down and retest these lows around 3640s. So keep an eye on that as well. The pound dollar has been very bearish. If you guys have been following us on that in the syndicate, um, we've made quite a bit of money off of this bearish move. And that brings me to another point is that if you're not a member of the syndicate, you should be. Because every single day I tell you exactly what I'm trading and I give you the trades and I tell you when I'm getting in and I tell you when I'm getting out. And that's something that, uh, that we, we get together every single morning for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes a day. And that's of course recorded so you can come back and watch it later if you can't be there when I do it live. But it's just a great time for you to come in, see what Akil and I are doing and what we're thinking. And, and then there's also other great free content that, or that that's part of that program. And I'm getting ready to put together the first couple of videos in the training course that's going to be included for all of you guys who are syndicate members. So uh, just take a look at that. You can click on the link that's right on your screen right now, and it will take you there. Let's take a look at Canada. Um, Canada is uh, is showing we're, we're back down into. This is a trend continuation play. We're looking for continued upside on that. Let's take a look at Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar, if we can get up, this is what we're looking for. If we can get up into the support level here, this resistance level at around 9450s, that's going to be a potential shorting area. Right now, we're kind of, this was the most recent support level that's been violated. So anywhere, a short anywhere in here is technically acceptable. But what you want to do is drop from like your daily chart down to your hourly chart or something like that and, uh, and check that out. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, I am using TradingView charts, tradingview.com right up here. They're, it's a great charting service. Uh, they have a free version, and they also have a version that costs you about 20 bucks a month, the pro version, which is what I have. Um, I'm going to cycle through some stuff here and just see if I can find anything else right off the bat that looks interesting to me. Um, since I am traveling today, I won't put any trades on uh, today or, or tomorrow until I get back. I probably won't have anything out until Tuesday. 
Um, but uh, for those of you who are in the syndicate, I will uh, I will be putting together a video for, you, video for you guys tomorrow morning since I have to be traveling. Um, we are currently short uh, Euro New Zealand from the syndicate. We had a kind of a rough day yesterday. Um, a lot of the profit that we have was eaten up, but we don't have a an engulfing candle here. Uh, my expectation is still that we're going to see some more downside to Euro New Zealand, but now we have a clear area where those uh, you know where those stocks should go. I think we I, I think we can hit uh, 5670s. I think there's a reasonable chance that this may just continue lower down into the 5400 range. So just keep an eye out for that. Like I said. I'm, I'm making assumptions here, and those assumptions change based on what the chart tells me. So um, I may be taught, this is one of the benefits of being in the syndicate, if I can just kind of pimp that out for you guys again, is um, is every day, you know, based on what's happened, can change the perspective of, of exactly what I'm thinking about where I think the market is going to go. And so when I come in on Sunday, I might have a, a one view of what, I, what the market looks like to me. And then come Monday morning after the European session has uh, is halfway through and the Asia session is over, things may have moved significantly. There may have been some news event that, that shocked the market. A structure may have been violated. Any number, one of a hundred things could have happened that, uh, that causes me some concern technically on the charts. And as you know, we don't pay a lot of attention to fundamental data for a reason I explain in detail uh, many, many times. But the technical side of things, there are a lot of switches that can happen. So again, if we rally back up above uh, these highs at around 58.95, that's a serious problem because the whole reason we took this short position was that we're back up against the structure here, the previous structure support. We had a double bottom support here followed by the break of structure, the rally back up, look left, structure leaves clues, previous structure support becomes resistance. And now we're looking for the market to continue into the bearish momentum that it's had already because we stopped out here kind of in no man's land. And I think that uh, you know the market may want to test this, uh, this area down here, which is actually probably a 127 extension or pretty close to a 127 extension of the last leg of the move. So if I roll this in, yeah, exactly. So look at where that 127 extension comes in. Boom, right there at previous structure support, right? So as we look at this, that, that's, a, that's a very realistic potential move that the market may see. And we are in, if we're looking at this, we're seeing only a, you know, a very small percentage of what that move could look like. And so when you look at the potential risk to reward of a trade like this, it just makes it very appealing as long as you can, again, as long as you can get small enough. A lot of you guys have really small accounts and it doesn't make sense for you to trade positions that are this wide. But if all you do is come into the Forex market preview every week and look at what I'm thinking and you can, you can determine, well, is the market bullish or bearish? And if you can grab your little line tool here and you can do some of the very basic structure stuff that I teach and that I give you guys for free, yeah, the market's making lower highs as we go down and it's making lower lows. That means the market is in a bearish trend. And if the market's in a bearish trend on the daily chart, then if I'm going to drop down to my hourly or I'm going to drop down to my five-minute chart, maybe I have a rule in my trading plan that says, look, I'm not going to trade against the daily trend. And if the daily trend is down, then I'm not going to take long positions on my hourly time frame or my four hour chart. I'm only going to take the, you know, the, those particular positions. And then of course, if you're an advanced pattern trader, which is something that I also teach that we're not going to get into in this edition of the Forex Market Preview, you can look at those and you can say, well, I'm only going to trade a specific type of pattern. Or maybe I'm only going to trade my patterns in the direction of the underlying trend. That's all part of the trading plan that you kind of put together and the rules that you assemble for yourself as a trader. But those rules are very important. They're critical, not only to have them written down, but also to follow them every day. And, uh, and we spend a lot of time working on that and, and working on just simply following a set of rules and a plan uh, when, when traders come to us. It's one of the first things that we teach is, hey, how do you read a chart? You know, how do you begin to develop some of these basic skills that no one's ever taught you about technical analysis? And then, uh, and then what do you do with that? How do you write a trading plan that makes it easy to understand and easy to follow every day? Pretty simple stuff, but stuff that a lot of times it's just stuff that nobody's ever learned and nobody's ever taken the time to teach you. And so uh, we spend a lot of time with that in, in things like the 12-week tra the transformation or the pro trader courses, or in tra courses like that. So um, anyway, 
that's going to do it for this week. It's a little short. I'm talking really fast. I get that, but uh, I've got to head back downstairs for some other stuff that I'm, I'm here in Dallas doing. And uh, just wanted to let you guys know I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to, uh, you know, to, to check out some of the other videos and, and to leave me a comment and hit that like button. I really appreciate that. So until next time, guys, good luck, good trading. Talk to you soon.